Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis, and today I invite you to make a mug with me. I'm going to share all the steps and process that go into the creation of a Wheel of Thrones ceramic mug from start to finish. To start, I'm going to cut and weigh some fresh clay off the block. I use about 1 pound 4 ounces for my mugs right now. After weighing out the clay, I'm going to wedge the clay. I'm wedging using a ram's horn wedging technique. Wedging gets the clay particles moving and ensures there are no air pockets in the clay. Although air pockets are not usually a problem in fresh out of the bag clay. Once the clay is wedged and formed into a ball, it's ready to throw. After getting the clay center on the wheel and shaped into a nice puck shape, I'm going to open the clay. After opening the clay, I'm going to compress and even out the bottom with my fingers and sponge. Next, I'm going to make my first pull on the walls. For me, the first pull is mostly about evening out the clay. I like to keep my pulls inward facing until I'm ready to adjust outward. The wheel wants to take the clay out, so I have more control in keeping it facing inward. The second pull is to gain a majority, if not all of the height to the mug. Once I have the height, I'll start to shape the mug. I like to make mugs that have an hourglass shape with a nice round bottom. As I'm shaping, I'm continuously recompressing the rim to keep control of the clay as I'm working. When the shape is just how I want it, it's ready to chop off. First, I use a wooden rib to take off unnecessary clay near the bottom, which also makes the piece easier to remove from the bat later. Finally, I run my mud tools cutoff wire under the bottom. Now I'm just going to set this over here in my plastic covered shelf to firm up a bit. While the pot is stiffening, I'm going to switch tables and pull a handle for this mug. A mug isn't a mug without some sort of handle. Without a handle, it's just a cup. For my mugs, I like to make a pulled handle. Pulled handles are, in my opinion, the most comfortable and visually appealing. Of course, this is just one opinion, and by their nature, no opinion can be right or wrong, but these are my mugs, so I'm going to make them how I like them. I let my handles vary in size. Some are big enough for four fingers, and some are better for two or three fingers, and also it just depends on the size of your fingers, people. I personally like a big handle mug that fits all four of my fingers, so I would say that I lean towards those most often. While the handle's set up, it's time to trim the base of the mug. I use little clay nuggets to hold the mug into place on the wheel while I trim. I bought and tried a Giffen grip, but I didn't personally find that it was worth the effort in my situation. You can check out the entire unboxing and review in the video that I made. When trimming, I use my Mud Tools Do All Trim Tool. It's my very most favorite trim tool ever. I round the bottom of the mugs and add a small foot ring. I put my name stamp in the center of the foot ring. It's a delicate process to get the foot just right so I can stamp the bottom without issue. I like to use a wood compression tool or sometimes a rubber rib, whatever is closest at the time, to smooth over the clay where the trim tool has passed over it. Sometimes the trim tool leaves these marks from the grog catching and that's just, it's not what I always want. Sometimes I want that effect, but sometimes I don't. And when I don't want it, I just smooth it out. After trimming, I'm going to attach the handle to the mug. The handle's dried to a point where it's firm enough to attach and hold its shape. I cut back the shape of the handle to something more refined with a small knife tool. To attach the handle to the mug body, I score each connection point with a needle tool. I then add slip to the connection points to act as a glue to meld the two parts together. It's important that both the mug and the handle are at similar points of dryness to avoid cracking from differences in shrinking ratios. For this mug, I'm going to carve a crater texture into the bottom. I really enjoy carving. Often I end up carving things I didn't plan to carve because I just can't help myself, which is what happened with this mug. I was making this video and thought, well, how boring would it be to not even carve a mug that's getting its own video? After carving, I like to soften the edges of the area that was carved with a damp sponge, just so that they're all smooth and there's nothing too rough. As a final touch, I like to add a single scale on the top of the handle for a thumb rest. I put the thumb scale on the same way that I make feathers for the bird sculptures. I feel it really adds an extra sparkle of comfort to the handle. 
After everything is carved and attached, I like to go over all the joints and connections with the wet paintbrush to smooth out any excess slip that may have came out or gaps that may remain. This mug is going on the drying shelf and then it will go into my Cone 04 bisque fire. Well, I forgot to make a video of glazing the inside of the mug that we're actually working on, so this other random mug is going to act as a stand-in for that. 90% of my mugs have cream breaking rust as the inside liner glaze. I love this glaze because it's consistent and dynamic. I pour the glaze in, roll the mug around to apply the glaze to the walls, and then dump the glaze out. If I was making multiple mugs, I would dump the glaze out into the next mug. Using a damp sponge, I clean up any of the liner glaze that ran down the front of the pot. Ideally, there's a minimal amount of this or even none. The top portion of this mug is going to be glazed in Carbon's turquoise. I generally brush on my glazes. There are a couple of reasons that I brush on my glazes. First, I don't have room for 25 buckets of glazes, and I have about 25 different glazes. Second, I like to do weird stuff, and sitting around with a brush and other tools for manual application like sponges, syringes, etc. helps me be in a space to make random and spontaneous choices. The bottom half of the smug with the crater texture is going to be glazed in a floating chrome and copper mix. I use The glaze I'm using is the Old Forge floating base with chrome and copper. You can find all the glazes that I make myself on glazy.org. They're not all my recipes, so you are going to have to go find them, but you, you got this. Once the glaze is applied and dried, this mug is going to be fired to cone 6. Fresh out of my kiln, there is a tiny little step that often gets overlooked or not recorded. I admit that I'm guilty of this. I can also admit that I'm unlikely to change my ways and include a sanding segment in every video. But I do sand the bottom of every mug with an 80 grit diamond sanding pad. The sanding pad I use used to have foam attached, but the foam like peeled off of it and here we are. This small step ensures that the bottom of the mug is super smooth and so they're going to be kinder to the surfaces that they sit on. All in all, this is a fun mug. I don't know that I'll make another just like it ever, but maybe one day. As of posting this video, someone's already bought this mug, so it's gone out in the universe holding their beverages. Sometimes it be like that. But you can check out what is currently available anytime on my website, bluenosetrading.com. If you want early access to my shop updates and videos, consider becoming a patron of my work at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Remember that you have really great ideas, drink lots of water, and I will see y'all next week.